Jiu-Jitsu athletes, this foreign training method is the secret to helping you enhance your athleticism on the mat so you are better prepared to win more matches and get injured less. This special system of training is designed to help you maximize your strength for Jiu-Jitsu, increase your explosive power on the mat, and decrease your risk of injury in training and in competition. This secret training method could be the exact thing that you've been missing in your own Jiu-Jitsu strength and conditioning. And not using this training method could actually be holding you back from reaching your fullest potential as a jiu-jitsu athlete. What's going on guys? My name is Josh Setledge and I am the BJJ Strength Coach. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing the conjugate method. I've made a lot of videos about the conjugate method in the past, and what you're about to watch is gonna be a super cut, taking the most valuable and most important pieces of information of each video and putting it together in this super cut. So get ready to learn more about the conjugate method and how it can help enhance your jiu-jitsu performance. Grab your notebooks, grab your pens, and I hope you enjoy. we're gonna be breaking down the train split that I've been using to help grappling athletes get stronger so they can win more matches and get injured less. You may be wondering, what is a training split? A training split is essentially how you organize training over a week. A training split describes how many days are in the gym, as well as what body parts or energy systems you're gonna be training on each day that you're in the gym. And if you're curious to know just how many days you need to be going to the gym to improve your jujitsu performance, you can click right here to watch my recent video on how many days of strength training you need for jiu-jitsu. There are some pretty popular training splits out there, some of them you may have heard of. There's the two-day upper-lower split, where on one day you focus on upper body movements, and on the second day you focus on lower body movements. There's the three-day push-pull legs split. On day one, you focus on all pushing movements. On day two, you focus on all pulling movements. And on day three, you focus only on lower body movements. And then we have my personal favorite and the focus of today's video, the three-day condensed conjugate split. Before we dive too deep into the conjugate system, I do want to let you know that I have a free four-week strength program that I'd love to send you to help you get stronger so you can ultimately win more jujitsu matches and get injured less. To download that free program, just click the link in the description below. The conjugate system was originally created by the strength and conditioning coaches of the Soviet Union. This method was adopted and widely popularized in the United States by Louis Simmons of Westside Barbell. The conjugate system focuses on using three different types of strength training methods to enhance strength and athleticism. The max effort method, which focuses on lifting maximal weights to develop strength, the dynamic effort method, which focuses on lifting sub-maximal weights at maximum speed in order to develop power and explosiveness, and the repetition effort method, which focuses on using sub-maximal weights for lots of sets and reps to stimulate greater muscle growth, bring up weaknesses or improve muscular imbalances, as well as increase blood flow and restoration to the joints. Now, the original conjugate split is a four-day training split. However, that isn't always optimal for most jiu-jitsu athletes since it doesn't give them as much time to recover for their jiu-jitsu training. My good friend and mentor, Phil DeRue, taught me how he was able to take the original four day training split from the conjugate system and condense it down to a two to three day split for his world class MMA fighters like Dustin Poirier and Ioana Yon Jacek. With his help, I created a three day condensed conjugate split specifically for Jiu Jitsu athletes. This three day condensed conjugate split is featured in the Bracket Smasher training program, which is part of the Strength Matrix. Now that you understand, what a training split is and where the conjugate system comes from, you may be asking why does the three day condensed conjugate split work so well for jujitsu athletes? The conjugate system helps you develop the strength and athleticism that you need on the mat while also being flexible enough to change based on your jujitsu training need and not negatively impact your recovery for jujitsu. It's a great way to train to develop maximal strength when applying submissions, speed and explosiveness to help improve takedowns, guard passes and sweeps, as well as allow for you to continue building muscle so that you can decrease the risk of injury and continue getting stronger. This is how training is organized in a three-day condensed conjugate split, and this is the same format that I use in the Brack Smasher program, which is featured on the Strength Matrix. Day one is going to be your max effort lower, dynamic effort upper training session. You'll start the session by hitting your heavy compound exercises for the lower body. This is often some form or variation of a squat or a deadlift. In a future video, I'm gonna dive deep and fully break down the max effort method, but for right now, just consider the max effort method your heavy training. Next, you'll move on to your dynamic effort work or speed work for the upper body. 
This usually is taking a submaximal load on some sort of vertical or horizontal press and moving those loads as fast as possible. During this segment of training, you can also incorporate medicine ball throws or slams. And in a future video, I'll dive deep and fully explain the dynamic effort method. But for now, just consider the dynamic effort method as your speed training with submaximal loads. And to finish the session, you'll pick two to four accessory exercises that address weak points or muscular imbalances for the upper and lower body. This will be considered your repetition effort training. Also in the future, I'll dive deep on the repetition effort method and fully explain how you can use it to improve your jujitsu performance. Day two is gonna be your max effort upper dynamic effort lower training session. You'll start the session by hitting your heavy compound exercises for the upper body. This often looks like some form of a heavy horizontal or vertical press, followed by some form of a horizontal or vertical pulling exercise. Next, you'll move into your speed work for the lower body. This can be some form of speed squats or speed deadlifts, and you can also mix in some jumping or plyometric exercises into this segment of training. And then to close out this session, you'll finish with two to four accessory exercises, which would be part of your repetition effort training. Now, day three is where we get to have a lot of fun because day three can be dedicated to a variety of different training focuses. You can use day three as what my mentor Mark Bell would consider a jacked and tan training day where you use the repetition effort method to lift sub-maximal weights to focus on building more muscle, building up weak points, and addressing muscular imbalances. Basically, you're just trying to get jacked. A jacked and tan training day is essentially a bodybuilding day and arguably one of the more fun training days in the three-day condensed conjugate split. You can also use the third day to focus on increasing or improving your conditioning as well as developing your general physical preparedness. For those who are unaware, your general physical preparedness or also known as GPP, essentially refers to your base foundation of fitness. What makes the three-day condensed conjugate split one of the best forms of training for jiu-jitsu athletes is that it allows you to train optimally and develop multiple athletic qualities such as strength, power, and conditioning, all while providing you a better ability to recover from session to session. This exact training split is featured within the Bracket Smasher training program from the Strength Matrix. And this is the same training program that I've used with athletes all over the world to help them win more matches and get injured less. To learn more about the Bracket Smasher training program, you can head over to www.thestrengthmatrix.com forward slash Bracket Smasher. The max effort method is a method of training that's featured within the conjugate system. The max effort method focuses on using maximal or heavy loads to further develop strength and force production. As an athlete, improving your max level of strength has positive benefits in all other areas of your athleticism. You may have heard me say this before and I'll say it again, nobody ever lost a match in jiu-jitsu because they were too strong and no one ever got injured because they were too strong. When your base level of strength increases, not only are you gonna be more efficient in all of your movements on the mat, but you'll be able to apply more force into every submission, every sweep, every takedown, and every guard pass all the while decreasing your risk of injury on the mat. And you may be asking yourself, how do I use the max effort method to help with my jujitsu? The max effort method is essentially your heavy training in the gym. The max effort method can be broken down into lower body sessions and upper body sessions. And during these max effort sessions, you're gonna pick one compound exercise and work up to a max or a top set. Depending on your overall training goals and where you're at in your jujitsu competition prep, your top sets can range from a one to five rep max. These max sets or top sets should all be at about a nine out of 10 intensity when it comes to difficulty. What we're aiming for is to get a nine out of 10 intensity on a specific exercise and strain against some big weight for that day. Depending on your recovery, where you're at in your training, and where you're at in your jiu-jitsu competition prep, you may not always be hitting a max or setting a PR every max effort session. But when you're doing max effort training, you wanna work up to a max or a top set for that particular training day. Each week, you should have one max effort training session for the lower body and one max effort training session for the upper body. Some of my favorite compound lifts to use during max effort training sessions for the lower body are gonna be the Zercher box squat and the sumo deadlift. My favorite compound lifts for max effort training of the upper body are going to be the floor press and the Z press. If you're gonna be incorporating max effort training, I do need to give you these two warnings. Warning number one, don't miss lifts. When working up to a max, keep in mind that you're working up to a technical max. 
Gradually work up in weight for that selected compound exercise and continue working up in heavier weights until you hit any point of technical breakdown. This will not only help decrease your risk of injury, but will also lead to greater strength gains over a longer period of time. Warning number two, don't always do the same thing. The law of accommodation states that the body will need a different stimulus on a regular basis to continue making positive progress. In order to continue getting stronger, you'll need to regularly change up the compound lifts that you're using for your max effort training sessions. If you're new to this style of training, I would suggest picking one compound exercise for your max effort training for the upper body and one compound exercise for the lower body. Use these compound exercises for three weeks and then rotate in two new exercises, one for the upper body, one for the lower body. As you gain more experience, you'll be able to play around and find out which exercises your body adapts best to and that are gonna allow you to continue getting stronger and improving your performance on the mat. Before we get further into the video, I did wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Saga Fitness. Saga Fitness is a technology company that specializes in blood flow restriction training. Their wireless and fully Bluetooth blood flow restriction training cuffs, which I'm wearing right now, are tools that I've been using for the past several months to enhance my level of muscle growth, maintain a greater level of strength, recover faster from injuries, and improve my conditioning for jujitsu. Saga Fitness has created an amazing fully wireless blood flow restriction training cuff that connects directly to your phone, automatically calibrates to your preferred occlusion pressure, and provides full workouts and training programs for your specific training needs. If you want to support the channel and get your hands on a pair of some Saga Fitness blood flow restriction training cuffs, all you got to do is just click the link in the description below and use code COACHJ to get 10% off your order. And now, back to the video. The dynamic effort method Method focuses on using submaximal loads or lighter weights and moving them at maximum speed to help increase force production and improve power and explosiveness. As an athlete, improving your ability to absorb and produce force as quickly as possible has a massively positive effect in all other areas of your athleticism on the mat. Remember, no one ever lost a match because they were too fast. When you use the dynamic effort method to improve your ability to quickly absorb and produce force, you also improve your ability to react quickly to the movements of your opponent. You also decrease the amount of rest you need to be explosive for multiple efforts, and you also increase physical resiliency, which ultimately helps you decrease your risk of injury on the mat. When it comes to using the dynamic effort method to improve your jujitsu performance, the dynamic effort method is essentially your speed training in the gym. The dynamic effort method can be broken down into lower body sessions and upper body sessions. During these sessions, you'll pick a compound lift or some form of a plyometric exercise and perform multiple sets and reps, focusing on moving as quickly and as explosively as possible on every rep. The amount of sets and reps that you need is going to vary based on your training and where you're at in your jujitsu competition prep. But if you're new to using the dynamic effort method, I would suggest starting out with eight to 12 sets of one to three reps. Remember, the main goal of dynamic effort training is to take a sub-maximal load or a lighter weight and move it as fast as possible. For dynamic effort lower body exercises, the weight should move like you're jumping onto a box. And when you're performing dynamic effort exercises for the upper body, the weight should move like you're throwing a punch. Each week, you should have one dynamic effort session for the lower body and one dynamic effort session for the upper body. According to Louis Simmons, for best results, these dynamic effort sessions should take place 72 hours after your max effort training sessions. My favorite dynamic effort exercises for the lower body are going to be banded speed deadlifts and banded speed box squats. For the upper body, my personal favorites are a banded speed bench press and a banded landmine press. For best results, dynamic effort training should take place on a three week pendulum wave. This means that you progressively increase the difficulty for three weeks before switching out exercise variations. For example, in week one, if you perform eight singles of banded speed deadlifts, in week two, you can either add one or two sets in volume, or you can add 5% of weight to the barbell. And in week three, you can either add one to two more sets, or you can add an additional 5% of weight to the barbell. When talking about the dynamic effort method, it's very important that we also talk about accommodating resistance because the main intent of dynamic effort work is to move as explosively and as fast as possible. You can use accommodating resistance to stimulate greater force production, which is gonna help you develop greater speed and explosiveness. If we take an exercise like the bench press, the exercise is often easiest at the top 
at lockout and it gets harder when it's at the bottom on our chest. Accommodating resistance essentially allows you to add more weight on the bar at the top position where you're strongest and proportionately decrease the weight on the bar as you get closer to your weakest position. Two of the most popular forms of accommodating resistance are bands and chains. With bands and chains for an exercise like the bench press, as you press the weight up, you have to continue increasing the amount of force that you're applying into the bar while the load and or band tension increases as you get closer to lockout or your strongest position. However, if you're a beginner, I would not suggest using accommodating resistance for dynamic effort work. Accommodating resistance works best with athletes who have already been strength training for a few years. Listen up, I need to give you two warnings about using the dynamic effort method. Warning number one, don't go heavy. Remember, the goal of dynamic effort work is to move as fast and explosively as possible with sub-maximal load. At any point during your dynamic effort sets, if you begin to slow down, you need to decrease the weight. Warning number two, don't dilly-dally. You need to keep your rest period short. A major benefit of the dynamic effort method when you're using it properly is that it's great in helping you improve your ability to be explosive across multiple efforts with very little rest. If you're just starting to use the dynamic effort method, keep your rest periods no longer than two minutes and gradually work towards being able to hit one dynamic effort set at the top of every minute. I'm gonna be breaking down Gordon Ryan secret training method that he's used for years now to develop greater muscle mass and help decrease his risk of injury in competition. And this method is called the repetition effort method. The repetition effort method focuses on using submaximal loads for lots of sets and reps to develop muscle mass, address muscular imbalances or weaknesses, and improve your general physical preparedness. As a jiu-jitsu athlete, improving muscle quality is essential to developing strength and decreasing your risk of injury on the mat. Remember, a bigger muscle has a greater potential to develop strength. When your muscle quality improves via the repetition effort method, not only are you able to expand the foundation on which you can develop strength for jujitsu, but your muscles, ligaments, and tendons all become more resilient and less likely to get injured on the mat. And this is a huge reason why Gordon Ryan has used this method for years to help improve his overall jujitsu performance. In an interview with Lex Friedman, Gordon Ryan spoke about his strength and conditioning training and explained how his training resembles what would typically look like bodybuilding training. Gordon, as somebody who uh, on Instagram posts a lot of pictures of you being shredded and huge, uh, what's the value of, uh, of strength? I do a lot of bodybuilding workouts, basic split, like a chest and triceps, back and biceps day. I train jiu-jitsu every day and I lift three to four times a week. I generally don't go super heavy when I lift. I usually do moderate weights with a, with a very high rep, rep range, like four sets of 20 with a drop set at the end to fatigue the muscles. The high rep sets with minimal rest that Gordon talks about is a crucial component to repetition effort training. This method can be very effective in stimulating muscle growth and can be very useful for jujitsu athletes. The repetition effort method can be broken down into upper body sessions and lower body sessions. These sessions will often follow your max effort and your dynamic effort training. When using the repetition effort method, select two to four exercises that focus on building up weaknesses or addressing muscular imbalances. The exact sets and reps that you use for the repetition effort method will vary depending on what your current training goals are and how close you are to jujitsu competition. As a beginner looking to use the repetition effort method, here's a sample template that you could use. To focus on hypertrophy or building a bigger muscle, perform sets in the eight to 12 rep range. To focus more on increasing blood flow and joint restoration, perform sets in the 15 to 25 rep range. And to focus more on increasing your general physical preparedness and your conditioning, perform sets in the 25 to 50 rep range. Some of my favorite exercises to use for the repetition effort method, the cable face pull, the banded leg curl, the rope curl, and the back extension. Don't use the repetition effort method before you hear about these two rules. These two rules are gonna make sure that you're using the repetition effort method correctly and are gonna allow you to have much more effective training sessions. Rule number one, stimulate, don't annihilate. The repetition effort method should consist of exercises that address weak points and muscular imbalances, but should not cause pain or completely exhaust you for your upcoming jujitsu training sessions. If you're a jujitsu athlete, it's no secret that you're gonna have your fair share of aches and pains. The repetition effort method is where you can 
focus on increasing blood flow and restoration in those tissues that have been taken a beating during training. Remember, always leave the gym feeling better than when you walked in. Rule number two, get creative and have fun. The repetition effort method is arguably one of the most fun training methods to use because you're essentially just trying to get jacked. My good friend and mentor Mark Bell is a huge proponent of the conjugate system and according to Mark Bell, the repetition effort method is one of the secrets to becoming jacked and tan. Following your max effort training and your dynamic effort training, select two to four exercises that are going to address some weaknesses, help you pack on a little bit more muscle, and give you a crazy pump. 